Going back to the question of whether it's true that vegetable oil has decreased heart disease incidence in this study, it's very difficult to tease out the effect of animal fat and vegetable oil from some of the other confounders. Even though this was a randomized trial, because the trial uh, was fairly small with 850 people, it's, it was bound to not distribute some confounders evenly, and one of those confounders was smoking. And we can see from this graph here that there were twice as many heavy smokers in the animal fat group and 60% more moderate smokers, whereas there were more light smokers and non-smokers in the group consuming vegetable oils. Considering that uh, smoking causes heart disease and cancer, this makes this trial look even worse for the vegetable oil group. On top of that, the animal fat diet for some reason was deficient in vitamin E. We don't have good evidence from humans, but animal experiments suggest that we want 0.6 milligrams of vitamin E for every gram of PUFA in our diet. Vegetable oils are a lot higher than animal fats in vitamin E, but they're also a lot higher in PUFAs. So that means that we need more vitamin E when we consume lots of PUFAs. So we want to look at the ratio. And if we look at the ratio, the vegetable oil diet had a ratio that pretty closely approximates the ideal uh, ratio that we see from animal experiments. It was over 0.5, pretty close. The animal fat diet was less than 0.2, so it miserably failed to get anywhere near the ideal ratio. And we got to wonder why that is, because animal fats are not intrinsically low in vitamin E. For example, even commercial butter, the average butter that you buy in the store, has a ratio of 0.76. The average butter would have outperformed the vegetable oil in this diet. So they didn't tell us that much about the composition. Maybe it had too, much, too many hydrogenated oils. Maybe the animal fats were really, really low quality. Maybe, it was, maybe they cooked them too much. We don't know what it was. But for some reason, this diet was very deficient in vitamin E compared to what you would have gotten if you were using high quality animal fats. For example, if you were using grass-fed butter, you would have had a ratio of about 1.3, which is way more vitamin E than you would seem to need from the animal experiments. So, unfortunately, we have to conclude that the effects of animal fat, cigarette smoking, and vitamin E deficiency on heart disease mortality cannot be distinguished from one another. That long-term vegetable oil consumption may increase mortality from cancer and other causes. That animal fat may protect against the adverse effects of cigarette smoking and vitamin E deficiency. In other words, smoking and vitamin E deficiency should cause heart disease and cancer. So. Uh, Especially with the cancer, the animal fats seem to be really protective. And in the case of the heart disease, we just don't know, you know which of these was out competing each other. And then finally, studies with a duration of fewer than seven years are not long enough to determine the true effects of vegetable oils. And this did not escape the authors themselves. They said this small excess of non-atherosclerotic mortality in the late years of the study raises the very important and difficult question of whether future clinical trials of diets rich in unsaturated fat must be planned for periods in well in excess of eight years rather than for the five-year periods that have been the usual goal. How many of you see, have seen one study that was performed well in excess of eight years testing the effects of substituting vegetable oils for animal fats? I don't, I don't see any hands raised, including my own, because those studies, to my knowledge, do not exist. So we can conclude that there is no evidence from these trials that substituting vegetable oils for animal fats reduces heart disease risk or saves lives and may even do the opposite, and that vegetable oils appear to promote cancer. There are several unanswered questions, like what is the long-term effect of these oils? What are the effects uh, in healthy, free-living youth from the beginning of life? Uh, does it make a difference whether the vegetable oils are uh, balanced in omega-3 or not? How do they interact with other nutrients in the diet? What is the effect of high-quality nutrient-dense animal fats like good butter instead of the poor-quality vitamin E deficient fats used in the last study? All of these questions are unanswered. Uh, I think, uh, uh, for a brief amusing note, it's worth noting that the reason the LA Veterans Administration Hospital Study investigators used the high PUFA diet was not because they had a conviction that it was the ideal diet for preventing heart disease or that it, diet was the ideal way of preventing heart disease. Uh, and they noted that its composition did not correspond to any traditional diets that they could find anywhere because most Traditional diets were either high in saturated fat or they were low in total fat. And they said that the expectation that this, uh, that this diet 
depressing serum cholesterol concentrations would have limited potential usefulness. Uh, in other words, they wanted to use a low-fat diet, but they confirmed that this would not be very effective for their study because in a pilot study, a low-fat diet was rejected with considerable resentment. So they, <laughs> they, they had to use uh, something that uh, would lower serum cholesterol, and they tried to find some precedent for this type of diet, but they said indeed only one such population, the Burmese, is known to us to approach this characteristic. And of course they say approach, meaning no one on earth ever consumed this high PUFA oil, vegetable oil diet, which means that we're all guinea pigs. And they said, because total longevity was not affected favorably for this reason, and because of the unresolved question concerning toxicity, we consider our own trial with or without the support of other published data to have fallen short of providing a definitive and final answer concerning dietary prevention of heart disease. So we are guinea pigs for these oils that uh, have never been given good evidence that they will actually prevent heart disease. And they may be, as these investigators said themselves, uh, toxic. I think these trials have never been summed up better than they were summed up by the late endocrinologist Broda Barnes in his 1976 book, Solve the Riddle of Heart Attacks, in which he wrote, everyone should have the privilege of playing Russian roulette if it is desired, but it is only fair to have the warning that with the use of polyunsaturated fats, the gun probably contains live ammunition. <laughs> So we can say that there are a few truths we can discern here, that clinical trials have miserably failed to demonstrate the harmful effects of saturated fat, that vegetable oils may promote heart disease and likely promote cancer. And if we go back to that foundation that we laid at the beginning for common sense about animal fats, the big picture scenario seems to indicate to us that animal fats can help us maximize our nutritional status, prevent physical degeneration, and promote vibrant health. Uh, that said, uh, many of you know that I'm not necessarily a proponent of consuming a particular amount of animal fat or a particular amount of carbohydrate. So instead of doing that, telling everyone you need to eat lots and lots of animal fat or you need to eat very little carbohydrate or you need to eat lots of protein, my goal here is simply to take the fear out of fat. We know that health promoting traditional diets vary very widely in fat and carbohydrate intake, that nutritional needs vary very widely between different people and may differ uh, over the course of a lifespan within an individual person uh, depending on many different factors. And of course common sense would say that even though animal fats may promote health, uh, so do many other things, and it's entirely conceivable that someone might benefit their health by replacing some animal fat with something else because there might be something else in the diet that they need that they're not getting if all they're eating is animal fat. So rather than saying that there's a particular amount of animal fat that people should need, I would rather just uh, use a broad picture framework to uh, paint a uh, sort of lay out a menu of traditional fats and oils that appear to be consistent with good health and suggest that everyone take as much as they need uh, from these fats and oils and enjoy it while they're doing so. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching highlights from the 2012 Low Carb Cruise and stay tuned for full details on the 2013 Low Carb Cruise. Visit lowcarbcruiseinfo.com. Hello everybody, I'm Pam Young and I wrote a book called The Mouth Trap, The Butt Stops Here. And it's not a diet book, it doesn't tell you what to eat, it tells you how to mind what kind of diet you're going to be on. If you find yourself on any diet and you're starting to lose your willpower and you need a little help, The Mouth Trap, The Butt Stops Here will really give you some insights on how to really enjoy every single bite you take. The very first line in the book is, I don't know about you, but my mouth gets me into more trouble than any other hole in my body. To order the book, go to the home page of my website and you'll see a tab that says, Lose Weight.